Humans eventually develop the ability to create complex social structures, to develop meaning in complex ways within societal structures and institutions, to create symbolic forms of communication, not simply language, not simply gestural responses, but symbols that persist and have universal meaning across different environments and different social contexts. This is tremendously important in the evolution of humans. Even from a sort of theoretical perspective, this hat can illustrate to us why it's important to study not just evolution by itself, but evolution in the context of human evolution. The complexity of the human evolution over the last two million years, illustrated most significantly by this increase in our brain size, opens up different pathways for evolution to operate. The fact that we have this whole alternative system by which we can generate variation, cultural variation, social variation, and variation that's potentially meaningful from an evolutionary perspective. It has variation. It's potentially associated with fitness. It can be passed on. We have social mechanisms that ensure the transmission of information across generations. It means that evolution can operate simultaneously, not just on our genetic and biological selves, but on the social realms that we construct that have meanings as well. So we see throughout the evolution of the Pleistocene, this becoming an increasingly important part of the evolution of humans. We see the development of styles within archaeological objects, where certain regional population distinctions. We see the development of ornamental objects, non-functional objects within the material culture. We see increasing evidence of geographic specialization in terms of the kind of ecology and the kind of uh, ecological activities that populations are involved in, how they're getting food out of their environment, how they're surviving, how they're persisting. We potentially see the development of different social systems and different social structures around survival and reproduction, and the potential for tremendous population level differentiation on non-genetic grounds. In other words, the development of human behavioral practices that create variation that evolution can operate on, but variation that's not necessarily at the genetic level, and therefore doesn't necessarily create pathways for reproductive isolation. Instead, populations might remain reproductively compatible even as they develop this non-biological variation through social systems. So the brain becomes a really unique agent for evolutionary change, a really unique adaptive mechanism in the context of human evolution. And a reason why the study of human evolution in particular over the last two million years is interesting not just for understanding who we are, but for understanding how evolution can operate. So our brain is very large, and that size reflects much more than simply the ability to be intelligent and make good answers and do well. It reflects a unique evolutionary adaptation to be able to do lots of things and to be flexible and generic in how we approach the world around us.